Hi everyone, uh, in this video I want to talk to you about how you can calculate the covariance and correlation of individual stock returns. Covariance means varying together, so covariance is how the returns vary together. And correlation is also capturing the same idea but, a, but in a slightly different way and I'll talk about it in just a minute. Why is this idea so important? Well, because while investing in stocks or in assets is risky, there is some of the risk that can be mitigated or avoided simply by diversifying your wealth across different types of assets which are less than perfectly correlated. Let's get down to an example to show you how you can calculate covariance and correlation in Excel. So suppose you're living in a world where there are two stocks, Supertech and Slow Mo and you're considering investing in them today, you don't know what exactly is the rate of return that you're gonna earn in the future because the future return may very well depend on whether there's going to be a depression, a recession, a normal state of the economy or boom. The probabilities of these different states of the world are given and you're also told what the returns on super tech and slow-mo will be in these different states of the world or what I'm calling the state of the economy. I have used exactly these data to show you how you can calculate something called the expected return for super tech and the expected return for slow-mo and I've also shown you how you can calculate the variance and the standard deviation. The idea of covariance is rather similar to the idea of variance where variance looks at how the returns on an individual stock vary or deviate from its mean the idea of covariance is how the returns of an individual stock varies from its mean and how at the same time the return on another security deviates from its mean. And so the formula for covariance actually looks something like this. The, the covariance of the returns on super tech, I'm abbreviating that with ST, and slow-mo, which I am abbreviating with SM, is you first take a look at how the returns of super tech in a particular state of the world, call it depression, is deviating from the expected return of super tech, which is 10%, and how at the same time, the returns of slow-mo in depression is deviating from the expected return of slow-mo, and then you multiply this product by the probability of depression actually happening, and then you do the same calculation for recession, and then for normal, and then for boom. You can easily do this calculation using this function in Excel called sum product. And so if you do some product, what are you asking Excel to do? You're basically saying first take this deviation of super tech from its mean. Okay, that's array one. You multiply it with this array, which is the deviation of slow mo's returns from its mean. And the third array is actually these probabilities that you have over here. So when you do this, right? What Excel will literally do is that first it will take the product or multiply 5% with negative 47% and negative 14%. That's one product. Then it will do the same calculation for recession. 25%, negative 21%, 10%. Multiply all these three numbers. Then 40%, 4%, 3%. Multiply or take the product of these three numbers and finally do the same for boom. And once it does that, it will sum them all up that by very definition is covariance and so when you do this you get negative 0.75 percent with covariance it is not the magnitude of the number that matters a whole lot what really matters is the sign of covariance if it is negative this means that on average as the returns on super tech go up the returns on slow-mo go down. They're negatively related with each other. So the thing of importance here is the sign, not as much as the magnitude. The reason why the magnitude is not that important is because the unit of measurement for covariance is the same 
as the unit of measurement for returns, which is percentages. To help you understand that, let's suppose that I do the following. Let's suppose that I told you that all these returns that I have, I know that these are in percentages. So negative 37% basically means negative 0.37, right? So I'm going to change the format, okay? So everything still is the same. All I did was that I just changed the way that the same numbers are expressed. But now, let's suppose that I told you that these were not returns, that these were dollar terms. Maybe this was billions. So 0 0.37 negative. This is negative 0 0.37 billion. This is negative 0 0.09 billion. What's going to happen? Your interpretation of covariance now will be this is negative 0 0.01 billion covariance. All of a sudden, that small negative covariance seems like a lot because the answer is coming out in billions. And that is the problem with covariance. The magnitude of the covariance number is sensitive to how the underlying inputs are being measured. If you're measuring returns in percentages, you will get a number in percentages. If the underlying number is in billions, the magnitude will be in terms of billions, which is why with covariance, we don't really focus as much on the magnitude. What we really care about is the sign of covariance, which in this case is negative. Now, is there a number like covariance, which can give us a sense of how the two variables are related to each other, either positively or negatively, but is not sensitive to how these variables are being measured? The answer is yes. And that number is correlation. So the way we calculate correlation is that it is equal to the covariance number and you divide it by the product of the individual standard deviations of the two securities. So in this case, standard deviation of SuperTech is 18.63% and you multiply that by 8.27%. And so you get something like negative 0.49. Please understand that correlation is independent of the unit of measurement. This is not in dollars. This is not in millions. This is not in billions. Because if your returns were being measured in percentages, then the covariance would be in percentage and the denominator, which is the standard deviation, those would be in percentages. And so those percentages would cancel each other out. If these numbers were in millions, then your standard deviation would be in millions, your covariance would be in millions. And again, if you take something in the numerator that is in, that is in millions and divide by something which is also in millions, again, the unit of measurement will cancel out. And so this negative 0 0.49 is independent of how the underlying numbers are being measured. That is the main idea behind correlation. The other thing that you should know about correlation is that this is a number that lies between negative one and plus one. If you get a correlation, which is very, very close to negative one, this means that the two returns are very negatively correlated. And if you get a correlation that is very, very close to plus one, you say that the returns are very, very positively correlated. And as you'll see in subsequent videos, you can diversify away a lot of the risk associated with investing in just one stock if you can simultaneously invest in another stock whose returns are negatively correlated with each other. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.